Booth chasing after. Can he get there? He dives. He caught it. Did he catch it? He caught it. Holy smokes for all of the mishaps during this inning. Tyler Spoon just made the greatest catch of his career. Swinging a fly ball toward right center field. Spoon on the move. Tyler gets there, makes a great catch, and they're going to double the runner off from first. This is former Razorback Tyler Spoon, and you're listening to The Morning Rush. Let's welcome in our guy Tyler Spoon this morning into The Morning Rush program. Tyler, when when's the last time you've had someone pronounce your last name with a long, elongated spoon part? Man, it's you just never know. Some random people here and there will just do it just for fun, and uh, all my friends will do it sometimes here and there just to, you know, let me hear it. So <laughs> just to mess with you a little bit. Well, we appreciate. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We appreciate you giving us some of your time this morning. We always like to kind of start uh, when we catch up with former Razorbacks, and and I know what you're doing, but for our audience out there that doesn't, what are you doing right now, man? Yeah, so now I am doing mortgage loans here at Iberia Bank in Fayetteville. So uh, transition out of baseball in 2018, and, uh, you know, my wife and I moved back to Fayetteville, and uh, we have a one-year-old little girl now, so that's really what I'm doing uh, these days. So uh, she's a lot of fun, though, and, um, you know, but we're, we're glad to be back home, and um, it's good for us. All our family's here, so we're uh, kind of living the normal life now. So it's it's been good. We're we're happy to be here. It's crazy how uh, quickly the transition happens. As we're talking with uh, Tyler Spoon, former Razorback, this morning. Now, Tyler, I know you've noticed what Kevin Copps has done so far this season. Back in your playing days, particularly your senior year, you think you could hit Kevin Copps and his filthy stuff? No, he's he's a guys like him are why I'm not playing anymore. So. Um, <laughs> He, uh, man, it's, it's really special. It's, you know, after I played here at Arkansas, uh, I, when I played with the Red Sox, I transitioned to catcher. So for me, I got to catch, you know, all the elite premier arms and, you know, uh, got to see it all catch a hundred, catch 90 mile hour cutters, everything. I mean, I've seen it all, but for me, the thing that's just absolutely crazy with cops is, um, he's the consistency of that pitch. And not only that, but, um, how bad the hitters look in the box is, is the tell for me. With, <laughs> and they know it's coming. They know it's coming, and, and they still take terrible swings and look like they've never seen a cutter slider in their life. And that, for me, is – like, I'm I'm amazed. Like, watching that interview with Kyle Peterson the other day, I was, like, in my room trying to think about throwing that ball and trying to picture what in the world is going on. I, it's it's amazing. It's, it's I'm glad he's on our team. That's all I can say. That's so. a good way to put it. Now, now Tyler, we were discussing yeah. this last segment – your teammate, Andrew Benatendi, won the Golden Spikes Award in 2015. Do you think Kevin Copps is the second Razorback to do it this year in 2021? Man, I think he's got a really good chance. Uh, I think when you just look at, obviously, the stats and uh, you just look at how valuable he's been for the best team just in, in the land without a question, I mean, it's... I, I think it's hard not to give it to him. I, you know, I, and there's probably a lot of good players out there that are having outrageous years. But when you just look at the impact that that guy has had on the best team in the country and just what he's been able to do in the best league in the country, um, and it's, I know it's tough. It's not necessarily a reliever award by any means, but good grief, I, I think it's I think it's a no brainer for me personally. And I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible, but. Um, he's been as dominant as any player that you know you've seen in the last ten years almost. It's crazy. Here's what's crazy about that: as we're talking with Tyler Spoon, former Razorback, this morning, our, our buddy Clay Henry brought this up earlier. Tyler, the draft was shortened this past year, and so you got a bunch of these yeah. guys that would traditionally move on to the minors, move on to the big leagues that are back in college, and and Kevin's doing it in the toughest conference in America against the toughest mm-hmm. teams in America against some of the better hitters. I mean. Like you said, this has never been done before. The season he's having, so I don't. I know he's he, he, calling him a relief guy. Is, Clay called him a finisher. What What would you describe Kevin Copps as a pitcher, and just what he is for this Razorback baseball program? Yeah, you know, he actually. It, it reminds me a lot of Zach Jackson. My last in twenty fifteen, Zach would actually come in a lot um, when we, you know, Friday night if we needed three or four innings, he'd come in. Um, and pitch, and then he'd also on Sunday if we needed a couple more innings, do the same thing. And so he's, in a sense, he's a starter that's going to give you, you know, the same amount of innings, same amount of pitches as a starter in the weekend. But 
you're just using him throughout in two different games or whatever the circumstances call for. And, um, you know, it's, it's an absolutely phenomenal weapon to have. And Zach, if you go back and look at Zach and his stats, I mean, it was, he, he was dominant as well. He did such a good job. And, you know, it's, it's tough to be in that role because you're, you got to know you're going to be out there for, you know, two to three, maybe four innings at times. And you just got to, you know, and two games of a SEC series. So you just got to be locked in at all times. And it's, it's not an easy task to do. And it takes someone special to do it. So. Tyler, you brought up your teammate, Zach, in the 2015 team. At one point in time, it didn't look like you guys were headed to the postseason. We know what happened. Stillwater Regional, come back. You get to play mm-hmm. Missouri State at home. Is there a different pressure on this team compared to your team back in 2015 that made it to Omaha? That's tough to say. I don't think so. I think, you know, and I keep up with Bobby Warnes a lot, and uh, we're good friends, and the one thing he says about this group a lot is he he just says, "Man, it's just you know they come up, they show up every single day, and it's they don't really expect anything, and um, it doesn't matter who they're playing. They want to win. They step on the field ready to play, and there's not really a sense of like any kind of nerves or anything. It's not like this huge pressure or anything. They just come out and play, and uh, you know it, it's kind of like they were saying with this tournament. You know, in a sense, that the tournament you could say it didn't really mean anything, but when those guys stepped between the lines, they didn't want to lose. And that's, he, he just said, they're just super fiery, very, very competitive. And, um, you know, I think when you kind of have that mindset, when you play, there's not really a lot of pressure on you. You just want to go out and play and compete and, and win. And, you know, um, everything else will kind of take care of itself from there. Tyler Spoon, former Razorback with us here on the morning rush. Now you brought up your old, another old teammate, Bobby Wernis. Tyler, what is it like from you, from your vantage point, seeing one of your former buddies now coaching under Dave Van Horn at Arkansas. It's awesome, man. I mean, I'm telling you right now, I think Bobby's Bobby's going to be a big time coach one day. And, um, I think if you ask anybody that's worked with him and works with him now, I think they'd probably say the same thing. Bobby's just got kind of the DNA to, to be a, a big time college coach or, um, really whatever he wants to do. He's just very baseball savvy and really understands the game. It's really cool for me to see him and you know, um, he's having so much fun with this team. He just, you know, again, like he said, he's just, they're so competitive and obviously they're winning. So it's, uh, he said it's been a lot of fun for them. And, um, but it's cool to see him do that. And, you know, we try to give him a hard time about <laughs> some of the stuff he does on first base. Of course, we can't, you know, we got, we got to tell him everything we see. So, uh, but it's, again, it's really cool to see. And he's, he's going to do really, really well in this business. Tyler, back when you were playing, you were a spectacular outfielder, and we played some of your highlights coming in, some of the diving catches you made. And when you look at this defense, particularly the infield of Robert Moore and, and Jalen Battles, I mean, those guys just catch seemingly everything inside. How big of we're, – we're talking about cops earlier, but Tyler, in your mind, how big of a factor is the defense that Dave Van Horn squad has had this season? It's – it's phenomenal. It's one of the best you'll see here at Arkansas. When you think about the defense, the way the way defenses work in baseball is it, it goes right down the middle, okay, and it starts behind the dish. and And people got to understand just how valuable KT Opus is, and and how well he manages his staff, and how well he just um, has a control and a feel for the game. And that it, it starts with him. It really does. And I'm a, maybe a little biased as a former catcher now, but um, that guy is really, really good. And then you move back to the middle infield and between battle and more, man, those guys are just, it's they're They really are. They look like a big league infield. They really do. They're just so smooth. They're very, everything just kind of flows naturally. Um, you know, the double plays they turn, it's just, they look so difficult, but for them, it also looks so easy. So, um, and then you move to center field and have Christian Franklin. And that's where elite defenses are made is right to the middle. And, um, every position that you have, I mean, Franklin's going to basically just lock down center field and um, does a phenomenal job with that. And that's where the defense kind of starts. When you when you have an elite defense, everything up the middle is elite, and that's exactly what Arkansas has right now. And that's an elite center fielder, an elite middle infield, and, and an elite catcher. So um, it's it's one of the best you'll see. Um, it it really is. But again, it's. It's fun to watch them, and I think obviously the middle infield with battles and more sticks out so much because of the stuff you see. But um, again, I think I think it all starts with Opitz, and I think he just brings the presence and um, just the savvy that he's had in, in the SEC. And um, you know, it starts in the middle, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And it's it's a fun team to watch defensively. Tyler, before we let you go, back in 2015, I got the pleasure of meeting 
Kent Atkins, who's actually now part of our Road to Omaha coverage at the Grease Pig Lubin Tune. And yeah. the spoon that you signed and he had, <laughs> the Stillwater fiasco where they wouldn't let him in with it. What do you remember about that year in 2015? And, and how cool was that to see all these spoons in the infield and the outfield and just kind of praising you at the time? It, it was it was funny. I think the first time I, I remember seeing it was, I think I was in the box and I just look up and I see this giant like kind of silvery thing and I see a spoon and it's kind of one of those things you just chuckle. But I think the funniest thing in the entire world was at Oklahoma State was um, they wouldn't let the spoon in. Apparently, uh, they wouldn't let Kent bring the spoon in um, to the to the ballpark. But you look up and it's like seventh or eighth inning. And then you like hear some of the Arkansas fans start clapping or whatever, and you see Kent like in right field, like behind field, like <laughs> holding up the spoon, and it was, I it was it was really really funny. It was hilarious. I I started dying laughing. So uh, Kent's great. He's he's a good dude, and it it, it, made, it was a lot of fun. He he made it a lot of fun, and um, that was that was a good time to say the least. So. Well, Tyler, we really appreciate your time this morning, man. Great conversation, both past and present, about your team in 2015, the connections you have with Andrew, Zach, Bobby Warnes, now on staff, and then what you think about this team. We'll uh, hopefully get a chance to see it, these regionals, super regionals, and hopefully next uh, you'll find this team in Omaha coming up in a couple weeks. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys having me on today.